Hello. I hear that some of you want to know about the beginning of the Redmond Cup. Well, it happened after a day when I had been spring cleaning. And as a matter of fact, I had been trying to clean some of the trophies that Michael had won in his go tournaments. And trophies are difficult to clean because they have so many little nooks and crannies. So I was thinking of those trophies and my husband and I were lying in bed and I had what I thought was a brilliant idea. You get rid of one of the trophies, the most complicated one. So I give him a nudge and I say, hey, Peter, I've had an idea. How would it be if we started a tournament for children who play go, there was a long pause. He was asleep really and all. And then he said, that's a zany idea. You may just about make it work knowing you. And I thought, what does that mean? Still, kind of encouragement was as good, you know, it was good to me. So I began to think about it. And when we next saw Richard Dolan, I asked him if he would be willing to help me. Well, you know, Richard is a very clever man and he's very busy. And so he said he wasn't really sure that there were any children playing Go in America. Michael's the only one. Well, you know, there may be one or two, but what's the point? Well, I, for encouragement for the others. Well, I don't think I feel too interested in that. He didn't really want to do it, so. He was really my only, the only person I knew who was in touch with anybody who played Go. I mean, so... I suppose I thought perhaps it was a dead idea and wouldn't go anywhere. But in the course of time, we went up to the San Francisco area because both of our daughters lived in Northern California. We went to see them. And on the way, we stayed in the Monterey area and we invited some of the people in the um, Berkeley and San Francisco Go clubs who had been playing Go with Michael, they'd like to come and have dinner with us. And some of them came. And one of the people who came was Ernest Brown. I'm not sure whether Mike Bull came to dinner or whether we met him later. But both Mike and Ernest were very important in the early stages of the Redmond Cup. Ernest, because he believed that it would work and that he knew children who played and he volunteered to be the first director. And Michael was important because he groomed the rules that governed the ages of children who would enter into the cup and the rules that governed who would enter so that they would be uh, acceptable to the American Go Association should it ever develop into something that they might want to sponsor. So both of these men were very important to the development of the cup and Ernest being the first director had the children's journey to a place called Atherton, which was near San Francisco, sponsored by a group of people called the Go, uh, spelled G-O-E, Ing Go uh, Corporation, which was, was based in Taiwan. And so the first few tournaments were held in Atherton with that sponsorship. I always felt very grateful to Mr. Ng. Yeah. 
However, after a while, it turned out that the game was being dominated by a young man called Eric Louis. And it was clear that we should try somehow, and Mike was very clear on this, to get the finals of the game into the Go Congress, which was held once a year, a big gathering of all the people who played Go in America. And Mike clearly wanted the, Ameri the American Go Association to accept the sponsorship of the Redmond Cup, as it was then. And so we went to, to Congress. Our four uh, finalists, two in the junior division and two in the senior division, played their finals in Congress. And this was the beginning of it being really accepted by the American Go Association and becoming part of their regular uh, tournaments every every Congress. Um, and in time, they took over the sponsorship of it because there is a moneyed arm of the American Go Association called the Foundation, which deals particularly with the education of children. So it was tailor-made to help the Redmond Cup become more important and to be more uh, more sponsored. And that's really the story of how it began. I have a lot of people to be grateful to because I didn't know how I was going to do it and if it hadn't been for Ernest Brown who had the first belief in it and then Mike Ball who tailored it so that it would be acceptable to the American Go Association it probably would never have gotten off the ground. So I'm grateful to both of these men and to Mr. Mr. Ng of the Go Foundation in, in Taiwan. I'm also grateful to to Eric Louis and his father, who came every year to Atherton and won their game and uh, and continued to win the games until, of course, Eric became the Red Bajan because he was winning all the time. He was, he was really then the principal young Go player that America knew of. So congratulations, Eric. Other belatedly. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.